My name is Jones Parker. I'm a research associate in the Department of Biology at Stanford University. I first joined Mark Schnitzer's lab as a Pfizer postdoctoral fellow, working with Mike Ehlers, who at the time was the CSO of Pfizer's Neuroscience Research Unit. And the main goal of my postdoctoral fellowship was to use the cutting-edge neuroscience tools pioneered in the Schnitzer lab to advance neuroscience drug discovery at Pfizer. The motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease include the difficulty initiating movement, a slowness of movement, also known as bradykinesia, limb rigidity, as well as tremor. The motor symptoms are thought to arise from the death of midbrain dopamine neurons, which project to the striatum. In the striatum, the direct pathway spiny projection neurons express the D1 receptors, and loss of dopamine is hypothesized to reduce their activity. In contrast, the indirect pathway spiny projection neurons express the D2 receptor, and the loss of dopamine is hypothesized to enhance their activity. And this rate imbalance across the two pathways is proposed to inhibit movement. So one of the motivations of the research was to determine whether this imbalance in activity actually occurs and, and whether we could target this therapeutically to develop new, new treatments for Parkinson's disease. But we were also interested in what other changes might be occurring and which ones were particularly important for the pathophysiology of the disease. To address these questions, we use viruses to selectively express GCAMP6 in either direct or indirect pathway spiny projection neurons. We then use the Enscopics and Visa system to image either direct or indirect pathway spiny projection neurons. In performing these experiments, we noticed right away that there was a striking spatial structure to activity within the striatum, and that cells that were near one another would coactivate together in spatial clusters of activity. And this spatial clustering of activity occurred in both cell types, we were very fortunate to have started out using the Enscopics and Visa system because this enabled us to image neural activity at the scale that's required to observe this facet of spatially clustered activity in relationship to movement. Moreover, our ability to, to image activity while animals were freely behaving allowed us to distinguish between the neural ensembles activated for one type of movement or another. And this really turned out to be the crux of the paper in that this is the facet of neural activity that goes awry in the Parkinsonian state. We then used the selective neurotoxin 6-OHDA to unilaterally ablate dopamine neurons in the hemisphere that we were imaging and look at the effect of this manipulation on the spontaneous rates of activity as well as the movement-related spatially clustered dynamics of activity in direct and indirect pathway spiny projection neurons. Prior to dopamine depletion, direct and indirect pathway spiny projection neurons have balanced rates of activity and they coactivate together in spatial clusters of cells that correspond to movement. Following the ablation of dopamine neurons, we have the predicted rate imbalance in that direct pathway spiny projection neurons become hypoactive, although they've retained some of their spatially clustered form in relation to movement. The indirect pathway spiny projection neurons become hyperactive, specifically at rest, and undergo a loss of spatially clustered activity and no longer fire in response to movement. There's a great unmet clinical need in Parkinson's disease, particularly in the later stages when the mainstay therapy for Parkinson's disease, which is L-DOPA, undergoes a loss of efficacy. This loss of efficacy is thought to be due in part to L-DOPA's propensity to induce a hyperkinetic state characterized by uncontrolled movements that are diametrically opposed to the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We asked whether L-DOPA induced dyskinesia had a unique set of pathophysiological signatures that might be targeted therapeutically. To address this question, we image direct and indirect pathway spiny projection neurons in our, in our Parkinsonian mice following administration of a very high dose of L-DOPA. Remarkably, the neural ensemble dynamics during L-DOPA-induced dyskinesia were diametrically opposed to those of the Parkinsonian state, and that during L-DOPA-induced dyskinesia, the direct pathway neurons are now hyperactive, much like the indirect pathway spiny projection neurons in the Parkinsonian state. Not only are they hyperactive, but now they're the ones that are spatiotemporally decorrelated and no longer fire in relation to movement. Moreover, the indirect pathway neurons, much like the direct pathway neurons in the Parkinsonian state, are now hypoactive, but retain some of their spatially clustered activity in relation to movement. And these diametrically opposed neural ensemble signatures are an attractive explanation for the diametrically opposed behavioral symptoms of these two separate pathological states. Mm -hmm.